on yourself. <laughs> It's just like home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back in the room for recess. And uh, we are in the middle of the SRO, <coughs> uh, the cost analysis. Mr. Bishop, if you want to come back up, uh, please, so we can. Uh, the cost analysis sheet that uh, Mr. Bishop handed out is what we were talking about in the discussion at, at, at hand. There was no motion on the table, but dealt with how we were going to move forward with five additional SROs if we wanted to have another coverage person or sergeant person and were we going to pay all of the costs or half of the cost uh, until the end of June. Now I think it was Mr. Kennedy had said something in reference to um, the uh, extra person and I'm not sure maybe this counts and the sergeant could, if, if we did approve a, a, a sergeant they could be a cover person. I mean I would think that would be the plan of the sheriff. Uh, if there was five officers and a, a sergeant that that could fulfill the role of supervisor and cover person. I'm just having a hard time adding five because our SRO is now at Irving High School, middle school, and five around. So we're only adding five and we already have how many? 16? 14. 14. So we have 14 and we're only adding five. So my problem is trying to spend this money when we've got a tight budget also on a coverage person and a sergeant for five more than 14. So if there's, if, there's, if there's data that says, you know, this many people took care of 14 schools, and I don't know why adding five more, we have to have a sergeant. Right now, I'm talking only about three months. Oh, I'm sorry, that turned up. Uh, the people that are uh, the sergeants, now could they not be the coverage people? Why would we have to even have a, have a sergeant added now? Why can't we just do the five? Just for three SROs. Yeah, for three, three months. months. For three months. And the other thing, too, is if we, 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 Okay. Sharing 50 55 new officers now is less cost to us and less cost to the sheriff's office when we do 50 50. And then we both have time to recoup our, our funds our funds, and maybe have some state funds in the pipeline um, when we want another sergeant and another coverage officer. One of the things is three months. And actually, it's, you know, it's um, and, and to tell you the truth, June 30th, um, I don't know that we have the SROs at our school, so we're really probably looking at two months. Well, kids on, cam good. kids on campus, and you're correct, till the end of May. However, they do training and things in June. We just felt like that with everybody, I don't want to say if it's an you know, emergency piece, but it, it, it is, where we could well, go ahead and at least help fund to get them through June 30th. But we wouldn't have to have training for a coverage officer or a sergeant. Correct. Talk about the five. I say no, I'm not sure, but the five new SROs would have to begin their training. So we just felt like our end of the budget in the June 30th, so if we could get whatever we decide through June 30th, then um, that would be a help to everyone. I mean, looking at span of control, I mean, if we bring on five new officers, span of control with the other 14 would probably be a good idea to have another supervisor. You know, but I think, are you saying that you want to address that until next, um, until, until the contract? Our budget. And so you're not opposed to... I'm not opposed right. to a new coverage officer, I'm not opposed to a sergeant, but okay. I'm saying that this short period of time until we can get some more funds rolling in from the state, um, hopefully to the counties and to the school boards. Well, I don't think there's going to be more money uh, coming to the sheriff's office from the state for SROs. Is that Correct, is that what you understand too, Ms. Right now, the money going to the sheriff's office, it'll roll 
through the Department of Education, then it'll go directly to the county or sheriff's office. Um, and it's called Guardian money. And as of, I think, yesterday, it cannot be used for SROs. However, I know the governor <coughs> is asking legislators to give them flexibility where they'll be allowed to use some of those funds for SROs, but that has not been put in place yet. And, and again, following the, the way that our state is set up, the legislature sets the level of funding for schools, which is why safe schools was increased to cover the school's portion, because we, we don't have the ability to raise a millage rate based on a request of the Sheriff's Department. So if the Sheriff's Department had said all along <coughs> they wanted to uh, increase this, we could have never done that and paid an additional portion. We've already been paying $125,000 a year more to meet crossing guards, extra duty pay, and the SROs in our budget. This was to cover, as I understood, the school district's portion of that is through safe schools. So just like any time the sheriff has any additional needs, he puts that into his budget, he goes to the to you know to the, the Board of County Commission and, and requests those funds, and then the Board of County Commission's got to determine how they're going to achieve that, that funding level. But that's no different than it, I think it's, it's always been. This is really to help the school system cover their costs. At least that was my understanding. Right. I mean, again, though, the sheriff's budget is set for this year. So he would have to go to the county commission to have emergency spending allocation, or emergency spending requests, emergency funding requests. And that is by us only funding half of this request. We would be forcing that. And that's what's been going on around the state. And I have every confidence that the Board of County Commission's concerned about child safety just as we are. I mean, my conversations with the County Commissioners I've spoken to have all been very positive. I, I'm sure we've been talking about it. I mean, it is a community-wide uh, function, I believe, you know, and I talked about that bicycle tire it's got to have equal spokes and make it roll smoothly and uh, so we all have a spoke on the bicycle wheel and we want it to roll smoothly so um, I'm just trying to figure out because I I know what the classroom is like at the end of the school, school year it's 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 so tight and well yeah sorry <laughs> well, well, you have children there and you have children there but you, you know this is where and then you look at the donations that we get every month from, from people trying to keep our classrooms together I'm just trying to say what can we really do to, to do the right thing, but can we just keep it patched until we can get to our budget and the sheriff's budget is in October? Right. I mean, the sheriff, I believe, is going to have to go before the board and yeah. the county commission okay. because oh, yeah. uh, our contract that is going to come in July 1 will be obviously a lot larger contract and a lot of changes yeah, to the contract. And then we just have so to rely on your expertise, and I'm just looking at the numbers. If we We've operated this way, and I know we've had SRO since '93. Oh no, um, I think we've had Sherry started on eight seven eight. Thank you, Sherry. That's you were number one. I was actually number one. Because we've operated 14 without the additional cards, without the additional coverage. I wonder if we could just make it a couple more months without that additional expense, and and when our teachers, I want them to cancel field trips and things like that. Um, and that's some of the things that the kids look forward to in here, and I don't want to say no. Well, uh, you know, one of my hopes was here was that, you know, we would take it from today forward. Now, the way the figures we have here, though, are not from today forward. It's from April 1st forward. So, you know, there, are still, there is still some time in this month that I don't know why we couldn't at least offer to pay for half. I mean, from this point forward, this is what we want to fund. And it sounds like the pleasure of the board, and we don't have a motion, but it sounds like it's probably going to be for half of that amount. Again, I would be willing to look at more than half, but or full, but that's, we've already discussed that. But why can't we do it from today, or from today? I could certainly uh, get in contact with uh, Major. Linhart, uh, this evening, the first thing in the morning, if I can reach them this evening, I'll call them and see if they can put it into place immediately. And if they can do that, certainly if it's the will of the board to uh, provide 
funding at whatever agreed upon level that you guys decide today, we can, we can make that happen. We can do that. Absolutely. I mean, the motion could include the funding to include from whatever first day they put them in till the June 30th. Not to exceed <laughs> three, uh, three and a half months at whatever we're doing. June 30th. June 30th. Yeah. June 30th. Yeah. June 30th. We yes. Can do that. But for clarification, at this moment already, they are providing that. I'm not saying that Mr. Dodd's um, goodwill gesture is not appreciative, but I'm saying right now, I don't want there to be a misconception. There are coverage at those schools that is, that is going on. That is so correct. regardless of what decision we were to make today, that coverage is still on. <coughs> that is correct. Yes, sir. Well, the sheriff has made it clear to me that you know he is having to pull officers from other areas in order to cover the schools, and that is true. He has pulled officers from other assignments to cover the elementary schools. But will he still, even if we're funding it, does he have enough deputies to still not have to do that, whether he's meeting our needs or the others? Because I don't know that there's right now enough deputies to cover that. He's posted five jobs already. That's correct. Yeah, so right. He's going to hire five. But I'm he saying that. Able. But that's what I'm saying. Right now, they're not. <coughs> so he's having to pull for those duties, irregardless. And that was, was that word? Regardless. Regardless. Thank you. You're I welcome. had to turn to the teachers. Mr. Bishop has <coughs> talked to Major Linhart. Find out when they're putting him in there. What we're doing, and they may be ready to start putting him in there because they have already interviewed. Correct. Yes, ma'am. They interviewed last Thursday. However, I believe due to funding concerns, they have not. Uh, notify those who would get those positions without having the funding to support those positions. So that's why I think the conversation is in place for us to have a, for me to have a conversation with Mr. Linhart, Major Linhart tonight or first thing in the morning. And we could take this formula and add two weeks to it and then mm -hmm. budget for that. Mm -hmm. I think we can do that. And possibly we need to have one more negotiation and, you know, base figures if, if we do the five, maybe we could pay more than 50%. Would that we're not going to, if we don't need the, the sergeant and the coverage, and the other officer, and we could pay a little more than 50 for the five until um, the end of June. I'd like to give them the opportunity to talk to the board of county commissioners and see what they want to add. Yeah, that's what I like to see. I think once they know that we're going to get some funding, they'll move forward with that. And I, I know yesterday when we met the sheriff, I think he was planning on um, making time to head to the commissioners to go to their meeting. So are you saying that we should put together a motion right now to say what we're going to do and I need a motion for you all to tell me I can spend this money. I move to hire <coughs> five new SROs from this point to June 30th. Fine. Funding half. Funding half. Second. Okay. We have a motion by this board and a second by Mr. Kennedy to fund 50% of the cost of five new school resource officers as of today, or as of our vote, which I guess will be as of tomorrow morning, and until June the 30th. Is that is that the correct yes, motion? Sir. Okay. And that's your second, Mr. Kenny? Okay. Is there a discussion on that now, please? And, and I think what we've said is, we're just saying to get us through to the end of the school year. We recognize there's going to need to be fuller conversations about what that team's going to look like moving forward. And it's, it's the same recurring problem. Bill's coming out of Tallahassee unfunded. And I fight for our balance every year. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, every year. Well, and I think uh, we talked about um, AES, uh, Mr. Bradshaw. We heard also now uh, from a teacher from Crest School we need to get some clarification on CREST so that we know what we are dealing with as far as our requirements. And then that is something that we need to be in conversation with, I feel, and that what we're saying is that would be in the in the negotiation, that would be looked at. Right. right? Yes. And we'll And was there talk about because there was a thought conversation and that's what I wasn't clear as to what that the governor's proposal got made into legislation regarding schools that were over a thousand has that been and if it's and, and the answer really at this point i guess i'm saying or my question is is that needs to be i think part of that conversation yes 
that needs to be part of the conversation. We find out exactly what the requirements will be for right. in which case we can interpret the bill. Because I haven't heard that definitely. And then, yeah, and I haven't either, and that's what, um, and, and I believe the other kind of big issue out there is they're still trying to understand what are going to be additional security measures that may be recommended by the state, and I don't think that they're, they're meeting until June or July. That's correct. We do not have the minimum standard uh, to define I mean, our, idea our needs. The cost. Right, that is correct. <laughs> and that's, that I think is, a, you know, it's a understandable issue we're going to have to be planning for, and, and it's difficult to plan when we don't even know what that's going to look like. Okay, is there any other discussion on the motion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes 5-0. So now, um, okay. Okay, we'll send the letter, we'll send the letter to the sheriff and to, uh, and to the board of commissioners. Mr. Don, could you restate the, uh, the vote that was taken as far as what we're doing? Yes. I'm sure. The motion was to fund five new school resource officers at 50% of the cost with uh, requesting the county or the sheriff to fund the other 50% from tomorrow morning, I mean, the business closed today, so from tomorrow morning through June 30th. That was the motion. Thank you. Now, we also, hold on one second, we also understand that there is work to be done, and, and we're, I mean, we're on, the, we're on the same page here, you know, but the community needs to know we are working diligently, and uh, the superintendent and staff, I know all of you, too, have been working to talk to people, and, you know, and we've reached out to the sheriff, we've got communication lines open, so we're working diligently to address all the safety needs of our school, dealing with hardening of the campuses, dealing with secured access, uh, dealing with drills, uh, dealing with more school resource officers. With that being said, Mrs. Hemmel did comment about the Guardian program, which puts money into uh, the hands of the sheriffs to run a Guardian program. And that is something that I would ask the board members to, you know, like I said in the workshop, you know, you need to be open to, but you need to research that and find out what that entails. Do the research, look at the bill, talk to parents and teachers and talk to the community because I do foresee that being a decision that we, be, we may be making in a relatively short order as far as whether we're going to go with the school guardian program in this case. Mr. Doug, you're talking about, because I know it's been, I think I've had it, had it referred to as a, a number of different things, a, a special deputy, a marshal program, and a guardian. We we're all, they're all, all the same. Okay. I just right. want to make sure. I call it in the bill, the Aaron Vice Guardian. Is um, that what it has yes. been? Okay. School guardian program. And that would require, that would allow certain staff members to be armed after going through a certification process. That and that's also happens. one, if I recall, that has to be um, both the sheriff's department yes. and the school district and superintendent um, yes. have to agree on that. So it's not a single-sided um, thing. That's my understanding. But the understanding is the money does come through the sheriff. And I believe what I read is that has to be the initiator to offer the program. And we do not know because Sheriff Prendergrass and does not know yet. They're working on that through Florida Sheriff's Association and the Department of Education with how much money we're going to be eligible for. And even if he wants to venture into that offering <coughs> and looking at what the certification is and who would be allowed, it's in the bill. So that's why I just say look at the bill and, and educate yourself on those that topic because that could be presented to us. And I, and I think it will. And I, and I agree with you. I think we have to stay open to listening to all of our stakeholders um, so that we recognize what those needs are. But I think all of us agree that the first and foremost need is to increase the SROs at our school. And that and is really today. exciting that, that we're doing that. Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful for that, but I agree, Mr. Dunn, I think, and you're, you're very poignant to keep us focused on, on looking where we're going next. Okay, are there any other comments or questions for uh, Mr. Bishop on school safety or anything? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, we have um, 
our finance section, and I do not believe we're, we have anything in that area with Mr. Rowland. Um, we're going to go to the attorney, um, legal matters. Okay, yes, thank you. And, uh, Gord, if you don't mind, as a measure, uh, just um, as the pleasure of the chair, I did miss the donations. Um, I, I missed that, and I would like uh, Ms. Verrami at this time, if you would. Uh, Ms. Verrami, could you please re read our list of donors for us? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to do that. At this time, um, consent agenda is approved a $1,000 donation to Citrus High School from Mike Scott Plumbing, the donation of five iPads and one. Cosmo Genius Toy Kit valued at $722.84 in this primary school from Diamond Donors Choice Aura, a $650 donation to Central Ridge Elementary <coughs> School from Sodium, a $5,000 donation to Home Sasa Elementary School from the estate of Evan G. Co., a $500 donation to Lakenta Primary School from Exxon Mobil, a $1,000 donation to Emerald Middle School from JM Mechanical Inc., a $1,000 donation to Emerald Middle School from Royal Legacy, a $500 donation to Lakenta High School for CEM Solutions Inc., a $500 donation to Lakenta High School from Joseph Farnham, a $500 donation to Lakenta High School from Daniel Sullivan, a $500 donation to Lakenta High School from Mark and Don Rogers. This total is $11,872.84. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. We appreciate uh, that support from our community and those donors, those generous gifts that have been given to us. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is um, the approval of the minutes. Move approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Kenny, second by Ms. Counts to approve the minutes. Are there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 to 0. And we're now down to um, citizen comments again. And I don't believe I have any more comments. Let me just look here. I think we've covered them all. Is there anyone in the audience that has a uh, wish to speak to the board? Maybe citizen comments? No? Okay, very good. I uh, will move to our board member committee reports and other business. Mr. Mullen. Just a reminder that uh, Friday is the elementary track meet at Canto High School. The board members will come out, uh, I guess, one of their last events for the elementary running clubs. Art. There's a Lacanto High School 
uh, the senior art exhibit. It's going to be March 22nd, 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And again, that is, is an outstanding exhibit. Uh, we go every year and look at it and see just how good, how talented our students are in art. Uh, last thing, I was at a meeting last night, and I'll, I'll actually go into this more later, but the NAMI Association uh, for Mental Health, and uh, a lot of supportive comments coming from the members. I guess there are about 30 there, but toward the school system and uh, how much we do to try to help the adults, the students, to try to help everybody. So uh, I continue to go to that. And I was talking with Amy Lee earlier, and she and I are going to discuss more about getting some help in the community for the students and, and for actually anyone who needs some mental health help and has not been able to access it because they don't have insurance or for other reasons. And also we're working to get some people to come into the community so we can have additional resources for the people we have. So I'm glad that's coming along nicely. Okay, let's go. It must be hard because I came here and we had first floor, second floor, other building full of art. It was absolutely gorgeous. The parents were here, the teachers were here, the kids were here. And I mean, even from elementary school all the way up to high school, it was absolutely fantastic. So this is, I love the end of the year because it was, this is the first of all the celebrations. I guess our students to start. Um, and so um, I did go to um, League of Women's Voters this morning. Um, they always, I, sometimes I go, sometimes I don't, because they, they're second Tuesday and so they conflict. But I, I brought you some things because they are, they're a non-political uh, group. Um, but I got impressed with them years ago when they redistricted the entire state and our legislators couldn't get one through the court. So the judge said yes. So I, I said I just went to see what these people were about. But they did a fantastic job in 2016 on the amendments. Mm -hmm. So they're already starting. And so they had this handout this morning and I made everybody a copy. But they have, not all of them, but they have um, where to write your commission members about what you want. Um, and this is the worst of the worst. They've only listed 10 of them, but four of them deal with our education. So I think it's just something that we need to watch in the publications and then, um, you know, they had a great packet on the amendments before voting in 2016. I'm sure they're going to do the same uh, this year. Um, but the, our four are mentioned there, so uh, we've got a little bit of support. I um, had the pleasure of going to the uh, Citrus Springs Middle School School Advisor Enhancement Council last night. Um, I want to thank the Superintendent, uh, Mr. Heber, Mr. Mullen, with Dr. Heber. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, Dr. Heber. Yes. <laughs> I think I did, is this not the first time is that we got to say that in, in a board meeting? Dr. Heber. I, I just want to say that again. Dr. Heber. Dr. Um, for the work in uh, educating our administrators on school advisor enhancement councils, refresher courses, that is flowing through to the SACs, and um, that's pleasing for me because it's, you know, there it's it's time. I mean, that group that I was with right uh, last night, they're transitioning from new leadership coming in and you know previous leadership moving on and. So it's, it's a perfect time, so I appreciate that. I also had the, the great honor of um, being the Master of Ceremonies for the unbelievable all-county chorus that was this um, last past Friday. And it was sponsored by the Citrus County Educational Foundation. There was, I believe, about 300 students that sang there was standing room only at CPA. Not totally standing room only for any of the fire marshals that may be listening to us. Um, <clears throat> it was packed and it, was, it wasn't just, it was well attended, it wasn't just that the students, you know, had a great representation, by the way. First year, every single school was represented, but the talent was off the chart. Um, it, it just was, incredible to just be a uh, and uh, just to be there so thank you to the Citrus County Educational Foundation because um, I talked about that this board 
um, our executive team dramatically supports the arts in Citrus County Schools <coughs> and the important role that it plays. And um, just seeing that that night was just an example of that. Some other things that um, CCEF, I want to give shout outs for that is going on. We have the Schoolhouse um, Hustle on April the 17th, I'm sorry, April the 7th. We have the Superintendent's Golf Classic on, I believe, April 21st. Yes, April 21st. Um, and. Go back up one Saturday. <laughs> Matthew and I was just going to say, and I have Matt Field Day on the 14th, which I will probably be there then again, both as a school board member and parent, because it's a Matt Field Day, so that means, and, and, and Miss Bryant's there always as a school board member and parent, she's just there, she's just usually one of the teacher's parents. <laughs> um, so though, that's, that is uh, on that, and then the other thing, um, I got to give a shout out to the Manor Sisters. Um, if you haven't, please YouTube, Google the Manor Sisters from Citrus Springs Elementary, and next uh, board meeting, I'm going to bring you the Manor Sisters, because this is a great <coughs> Manor's teaching um, videos that are being done by our guidance counselor and our assistant principal and they are just they are television quality and they are really teaching our young people about different manners and you know things that we did it's, it's just a great so I'll, I'll bring it in in the next meeting and then another important day um, golden citrus award um, our I should say our golden scholars award that's uh, going to be April 26th at CF um, our board has been very generous to contribute to that. Um, I know I got my check-in. I think Chairman Dodd got his check-in. And so if you have an opportunity, you can deliver it in person or you can get it to Ms. Bergerami and she'll make sure that it, it gets to the parties. Um, and with that, I just want to um, thank the superintendent for trying to make sense of some of the senselessness of our legislature. Um, and the decisions and, and the voting, and I know you've been staying on top of it. I know our budget doesn't look in our categoricals as challenging as I think it really is when we look at the fact that we are only increasing the base student allocation by a total of 47 cents per student. And so while there is some funding there, and there's some things that I know we'll be talking about, it's not all bad but it's also not all as good as sometimes it's, it's being perceived. So I know you guys are on top of that too. And that's it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kennedy. I've got a couple different items and a couple announcements to make as well. Um, so I would like to um, recognize a couple people that were here from the Central Ridge Elementary um, SAEC that <coughs> I attend and of course probably like you do, I always invite the members of the SAP committee to come to a school board meeting. And today there were uh, there were two of our uh, SAEC members, Porina Nagda, who I think she just left, but uh, Deanna Pizik is here and she's a teacher. And uh, so when I saw her here in the audience, I thought, oh, you're in the educational leadership program. And she said, no, I'm, I'm here because I'm on the SAC committee and I wanted to come here a little bit more about that. We appreciate you, uh, you coming tonight. Uh, to this meeting. Um, the Upward Bound Breakfasts are coming up next week. The Rotary Club is continuing to sponsor that March 21st and 22nd. And I should be at both of those. I hope um, we'll be, you guys will be able to make it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, we have spring break coming up, and the Citrus County Fair is during the week of spring break. March 26th is the start, um, well, March 26th to the 30th, that's the week of spring break, but uh, that's also uh, the start of the Citrus County Fair. We'll have a lot of students um, uh, that'll be showing animals there, will be involved with the fair. I, too, was uh, have been involved with the student art exhibits uh, and the program that was done here and what a great turnout um, it was of people coming to check out the art that's located all over uh, the buildings here so I appreciate um, the effort that goes into that because that does take some time and effort to do that but uh, 
it's nice seeing all that artwork around. We appreciate um, the students and their parents for being a part of that. Uh, the American Red Cross Shelter Worker Managers course that we saw the email on, I, I did talk with uh, Ms. Cernich about that, and that is what our, um, our principals and assistant principals uh, take that course. And I think um, there's a majority or most or all of our principals and assistant principals have it. If they don't have it, I guess they're scheduled to take it at some point. But I was a little concerned about the other message about the FEMA reimbursement. And uh, I, know, I think you all received that too today uh, from uh, Captain DiCarlo. And so I'm not really sure uh, that just came down. So I'm not really sure where we stand on that. But that obviously will be um, a topic of discussion at another meeting when we find out exactly what that involves and dealt with reimbursement for uh, shelter management. And so certainly we have done a great job with handling the hurricanes this year and staffing those schools and, and the shelters and um, making sure that we provide for this community. But I would like to see some more information on that when it comes up. Um, I talked a little bit about the drafting instructor position already. That was um, on my items. But the last thing that I have uh, deals uh, with drills and a concern that I have dealing with our emergency drills and I spoke a little bit with uh, Mr. Bradshaw and I think what I want to discuss is not, um, or you said it's, it's more since it deals with tactical issues that it would have to be in the shame. Well, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page uh, with that process. Um, and uh, so um, if it would please the board, uh, we do have, uh, Sam, do you have a, a chance to for comments now? And are you good on it? Okay. Uh, so I could. Just, just one thing, mm -hmm. um, regular business. I okay. should have, um, Superintendent and Mr. Muller, do you? I was thinking we have had been doing a great program for our leaders, the Nessel program. And I'm wondering if, and you, and you all will know when maybe is a good time for that, but maybe that's something that could be presented to the board. That's something that is getting, we've got a grant that's happening. But I just hear continuously positive things. Um, I think Mr. Mullen is, is one of the leaders in that. We There's a number have, of principals. We now have three trainers, correct? Yep. Lindy. Scott and David Rowland, and, 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 and then you've got numerous uh, both leaders and emerging leaders, um, or principals and emerging principals that are in those programs. Um, again, I, I just hear really good things. This is our next generation that we're planning for, and I think it would be good for the board and, and the community to see the really great stuff that I think is going on. So again, where you feel it's appropriate to maybe fit in there, but maybe we could bring that to us. Dr. Heber. Today, 
that I felt strongly that students and faculty members, staff members should know if it is a drill. And so that means that if they were to do a lockdown drill, they would advise that they are going to a code red, whatever the scenario is, and that they would advise it is a drill. That way, um, I think the climate today, the anxiety that students and faculty members have, not knowing whether this is real or a drill, I think we need to state that this is a drill. I think that it will be taken seriously. Um, but my concern was that if we don't announce a drill, and there were, were to be some type of incident happen on a campus, a door slam or a, some kind of sound that scares students and they were to get on their handheld devices, their phones, their smartphones, and start texting what's going on, we're under a lockdown, a code red, and people are saying this. That would be my fear, that we would have to answer to those concerns. And so um, that's what I wanted to bring. Uh, that was my concern. I think one of the concerns too in the classroom was is um, a lot of teachers didn't keep it confidential when they were told there would be a drill so they could judge their classroom curriculum accordingly. The, it leaked out to the students, and so a lot of the students didn't take the drill seriously. So it, I, would, I think that maybe precipitated this kind of conversation. But I agree totally with you. If once they announce the code red and they're not locked down within the next, the next few minutes, maybe they could say this is a drill. I'm thinking of what happened in Hawaii. Um, but, but the idea of letting them know ahead of time sometimes doesn't make it allow them to I totally agree with you because having a, a drill that's unannounced will cause such high levels of anxiety for teachers and students. It will cause more harm than good if you announce that you're going to have a drill and they're reminded of, of some of the serious things that could and have occurred and that need to be taken seriously. I think it will be taken seriously. I was in a meeting on Monday with many teachers and uh, they expressed the level of anxiety, how much it had increased with what's happening. We don't want to increase it anymore. I think we should announce this for the future. May I speak? I know that at the safety and security meeting, I know they, and we all know we have committees, we all know they recommend things, and we have spoke to Doug about this. And I can debate it either way, okay? I don't, when you talk about announcing a drill, and I agree, I do not think we need to say tomorrow we're going to have a drill because I do not agree with that. And because now we've told them, kids in the hallway, don't worry about them in the hallway. Yeah, there's going to be a drill tomorrow. I agree with that. Do we tell the schools, this is a code red drill, this is a code red drill, and do they take it serious? I think they do. I think they will. But. Uh, and that's one side of me. The other side of me says, if we announce this is a drill, and Doug's more expertise about emergencies than I would be. And if I'm a principal and I've announced forever, this is a red code drill, this is a red code drill, I get something on my campus that now needs a real drill, do that just come out of their mouth? I don't know these answers. Um, I know, and, and the one side of me says, would I rather have a bunch of parents phone calls right now because we didn't tell you it was a drill, or would I go ahead and announce the drill? So um, you know, we have to look at the whole picture. Like I said, I can stand up here and debate either way on what to do with those drills. I think what's important is that, and we are gonna have to increase the number of drills we have. I think that piece is important, but I think it's the biggest piece is that um, People know and understand that every time we have a drill or the actual thing, they've got to go in place because we all know once a drill goes around, Seriously. the principal, the administrators go around to see what happened and what didn't. We know that piece of it. So, like I said, I can debate it either way. Um, 
one thing we did talk about was not announcing it, just say this is red code, this is, you know, code red, and then immediately as that's going into effect, phone calls go out to the parents. You know, but that doesn't stop the text because we still got the kids and the teachers in there. I get all that. And it's a different day we're living in today because something happened closer to our home than ever before. So. I think that the, the, the first most important thing is that the communication that takes place after the event, after the, the drill, so that parents and so, because they will, depending on what it is we know in the week and the days following, we just having an increased presence on our campuses, there was total misinformation that was shared among the community. So that part of it, I think we we need to be consistent about if we have a drill, you know, to inform that there was a drill that took place or something of that nature um, to the, to that school. I mean, because again, we don't need to call out every school. It concerns me though that while I, I could probably debate this issue either way, I don't think that we are the experts sitting up here to make that decision. It seems like the experts should be, and I don't mean Mr. Dodd necessarily in that, what I mean, because I, I see you on safety and security as a very essential expert on that. But I'm saying I don't know that we, we are going to have an opinion, just like we're going to have an opinion about safety, but is that based in what is, you know, our experts are telling us how they want to run a drill you know, what the Sheriff's Department is saying, how they feel a, a drill should be run. Maybe there's, it's a combination. Maybe every year they need to have a, an announced and an unannounced. Because I don't think it's just the students we're looking at. We're looking at how the, the staff responds to these drills. So we need to be careful that this isn't policy. Yeah, we don't want people to know that the teacher's job, they've got the red and green folder, and the teacher's job is to do that same thing, code red. You, this is the policies you follow. Whatever the sheriff's going to do, we're not going to know. And we don't want to know. We just know that we have to have our kids in this place at this time. For but they are going to be changing some of those yeah, things. And, whatever and that's why, are, they're going to but that's why I don't think it's us, policy. They, te they tell us it's not policy, but they tell us you don't share the information in that red and green folder. Teachers know what they're supposed to do, and it's expected to be done all the time. So that the sheriff knows exactly where our kids are if they do have to come, and so it's it's a problem. But we don't we don't. But again, they're going to be doing modified drills. I mean, they've talked about that. That I mean, that I believe is an expectation that, of, of different combinations yeah. and so forth. Um, so as a result of that, again, if there's pre-information, again, I can argue it both ways. I just don't believe we are the experts in that, and it concerns me thinking that we're going to chime in and know what's best when I think the Sheriff's Department Safety and Security uh, Committee that's made up of the experts, that's, that's where that's an appropriate conversation. Well, I think also listening to what the, the teachers and staff yeah. say about something and, they, and talking about the level of anxiety that's created. Uh, that we have to listen to that too because there's an emotional component of this. It's not just to get to a certain place or get out of the school. It's an emotional component. But you don't an announce, if you think that we announce at 3 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow at 9 or what happens. That's right. Not, not what, that. Yeah. No, I, no what, I, what I'm saying is this. I agree, and, and Mr. Mullen, when we got into discussion on it, I mean, made some good points. You, know, you don't want, and, and Sandy, that runs council, what you said too, you don't want people to know and plan ahead so they don't allow students to go to the bathroom and they don't allow students to go here. <coughs> my, my answer to that is, well, the only people that will know that they're going to do a drill at 1037 this morning would be the principal and maybe the principal staff. Yeah. And they would then announce it we are under a you know the drill procedure that's that's written down um, that there would be we're now under a code red or code yellow lockdown whatever it is and may state the the scenario and, and would say this is a drill mm -hmm. um, so that way um, if there needs to if if the the reasoning is they don't take it that it's not taken seriously, we gotta get past that. I mean, we're, we're in a different world, it's a different climate. And so, 
it's the job of the principal to make sure they know that, that this has got to be taken seriously. There has been discussion on how they're going to drill. And I don't know if I should get into that, but it's going to be a lot more than what they're doing now. So if you got a kid doing stuff that he's not normally done, and you don't, you don't think that some, some kid's going to pick up his cell phone and text mom or dad or call and say, what's going on? You know, and they're scared. You know, so that was my concern. If they know it's a drill, and Mrs. Hemel has, an, a, a, an, has a, a great plan, I mean, it's to communicate. We, you already sent that message out, that call out to everyone, that there would be ongoing drills, and that the parents would be notified via telephone messaging system after the drill is over. That is great. I think that's a critical part of our communication. I'm just saying, because of the anxiety and the fear that I see out there, I think right now, at least for the remainder of this school year, we need to be telling students this is a drill and, to, and teachers. I had one teacher tell me that they get physically sick when they do these drills right now. Uh, it's, it's a lot of tension because they're responsible for uh, their classroom and yeah, I don't want them to have to live through not knowing whether or not it's real or it's, it's a drill every time. I, I, I really don't want that. In one of our um, accreditation reports, um, they, they pointed out that we do drills at very convenient time in our schools. And they said, you need to be doing drills during lunchtime or during passing time between classes, and how are we going to handle that? And we, we try, I think we tried one at lunchtime, we and it worked. Doing. It worked. Yeah, we've, been, we've been doing it, but, but you know, sometimes you just have to mix things up a little bit so the kids are prepared and everybody knows what to do. Well, this is not a policy right now. And I mean, I think it could be a policy, but I think Ms. Simone, when we talked, you, you mentioned, well, you know, what the consensus of the board, how the board feels would be something that you would, you know, obviously move towards, but um, what is the consensus of the board? I don't think the board should be making this decision. Well, I. Several of us have been through multiple years of drills. Um, I think they're necessary. I think they should be, um, I agree in, in today's time, um, we shouldn't say they're going to happen the next day at a certain time, but I agree that we should, after the drill is called, we should announce maybe that this is a drill, but then follow through all the way through. If it's a code red, then we have to do every, every check that a code red requires, and the same time has to be allotted. There's no teaching during code red. Code yellow, you can teach, but follow through with whatever the other people have to do besides classroom teacher. But um, the kids have to be trained, and the more they're trained, the more confident they're going to be that they're protected. When they know this is what I've got to do, my teacher's with me, she knows what she's going to do, or he knows what he's going to do, and it's all going to be okay if I follow the rules. So are you saying that we don't tell them it's a drill, or are you saying that we do? I, I think we started the, you know, no announcement the last year, the last two years I was teaching, and the kids took those drills a little bit more seriously. I watched some of those drills that were announced, uh, where most of those drills say, if teachers go to your door, if you see a kid in the hallway, call them in your room, let us know you've got that kid. Write it on the sheet, put it under your door. And I, when the drills are announced, I watch kids walk by my room, even though I'm saying get in here. I'm just going two doors down. I get back in my own room. And that shouldn't happen. And so the, not announcing the drill will prevent that complicity. You know, that I, it's okay if I walk two more doors down. Um, so um, I, I see it both ways. I think we've got to have the procedures. They've got to practice it. And the more they practice it, the better they'll be at it. However, that bottom line is I believe that the drill should be announced and the kids therefore can practice and they will take it seriously. And you were saying about the principal working with the, the students and the teachers to be able to, to get that belief in what they're doing in the organization that they have. I think that's the key. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not the kids not to have resources, but they need to know what is supposed to happen, who's in control there, and that they have confidence that the teachers and the principal know what's going on, I think we're good. But I do not think we should increase the level of anxiety 
in this day and age with, with what's happened recently, of the teachers, of the principals, of anyone, and the children serving up, do not increase that anxiety. It's too much now. Ms. Powers, I know you didn't mean this, okay? Oh, but it's but I want to be very clear. Every drill that is completed at our schools is taken very seriously. And what happens in our drills is once it's announced, or once the principal knows that everybody's in lockdown, the administrative staff walks around, keeps them in lockdown, and they observe every single classroom. And if you didn't put a book somewhere, those types of things. So I just want you all to know, I know you didn't mean it that no, way, I was but talking about you're just saying we need to take it seriously. Sandy was talking to right. people in the hall walking right. down, not taking it seriously. They right. have to take it serious. I agree. Well, I'm not saying they, they, they knew they were code red, but they just... And they weren't responding. They weren't taking it seriously. How did you get down two doors? Do no. Because if it is serious, then we have to have our kids at a certain place, wherever our policies say they're supposed mm -hmm. to be. We have to have them there. And whoever's going to come in to help us has to know that's where those kids are. And whatever they're doing out there, we don't want to know. Things have changed since I've been in the classroom. I haven't been in the classroom in 18 years. I've been here for 18 years. Good girl. <laughs> but um, I, I, I'm ready to, um, to do whatever the administration says to do, whatever that is, whatever it happens. And uh, I don't like not telling you that it's real. And I love the idea of calling the parents. Yeah, it's great. So did you say announce? <laughs> <laughs> she said announce. Three oh. announce, two announce. <laughs> I said, no, one, one I said announce one after it's called. Sure. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all said announce minutes, after it's called. Announce after COVID, and then in the next minute or two, if this is a drill. Announce I, after it's called. But I want to add that Thomas's idea of seeking information from people who are experts in this area is a very, very good idea, because there could be some things we're missing. That's the only thing that And that's a very good idea. And it's going to be very pertinent to each school because each school is a little bit different. What we how we can drill the high school is not the same way you're going to drill an elementary school in the school plan. The principals and the administrators there know exactly what they can do and what's best. And so, I mean, it's going to be the same policy, but it's going to be maybe a tad different because of school plan. So, like Chris, you can go to look at different things with Chris or with the survey. One size doesn't fit all. Yeah, and you're correct because some of our elementary schools have already had code red drills. And we've uh, heard a word from parents. And you're right, it's probably different levels. So, um, you know, and, and I go back to Mr. Dodd's comment of what that he wanted to announce. And when you talk about experts, you know, we're talking about a different breed of people when you have schools, our parents, and our teachers than we do with law enforcement coming in because there's a lot more. Um, <coughs> You don't have to know what they're going to do. Exactly. So, so there's just a different. Just right. glad they're there. Yeah. <laughs> and there's going to be different drills that are going to be going on, too. It's going to be a different. Yeah. And, and Doug, one thing I really like sitting here with all of y'all, we're talking about all of this examining this because we want it to go the very best it can go. Yes. And we want it yep. done for the kids the very best it can yep. So I'm proud of y'all. Yep. Yeah. I'm proud to be a part of y'all. And we're going to be asked, what are you doing? In we're following the school policy, whatever the sheriff, we're not going to tell you what they're going to do. Right, okay. Is there any other business needs coming from the board? All right, if not, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.